Hello, I'm Chris Parker with parkerphotographic.com and there's a button inside of Lightroom Classic that could change your life whether or not you have it turned on. Turning it on has three major benefits. However, before you turn it on, you should also know the three main reasons why you may not want to turn it on. So let's jump into Lightroom Classic and discover this magical life-changing button. So we're gonna go up to Lightroom Classic here and click on Catalog Settings. If you're on a PC, you're gonna go to Edit to get to your catalog settings. Inside of here, you're gonna to navigate to the metadata tab, and then you're going to turn on automatically write changes into XMP. Now, before you turn it on, let's review how this works, which will explain its advantages, and then I'll share its disadvantages. All right, so when you're working with Lightroom Classic for the first time, you had to create what is known as a Lightroom catalog. This catalog stores everything you do to your photo inside of it and it doesn't alter the original raw file. So anytime you make an image brighter or darker, add a mask, increase contrast, or any other edits you apply, plus any keywords or labels that you add to a photo, it's stored within the Lightroom catalog. And then if you wake up tomorrow, load up your Lightroom catalog and see a message from Lightroom that says the following, the Lightroom catalog is corrupt and cannot be used until it's repaired. Well, guess what? You're in trouble if you can't repair it. And that's because all of your edits are stored inside of the Lightroom catalog. And if you've been editing for one, five or more years, then every single one of your edits is gone forever. So you're going to have to create a new catalog, re-import and re-edit every single image. So how fun would that be? Probably not very much, I would imagine. All right, so that brings us to the first advantage of turning this on, and that is the metadata or the editing, keywording, and labels you apply to a photo will be created in a file outside of the Lightroom catalog, and that's going to reside with the original RAW file. So let me show you what that looks like. So here's the original RAW file here, and right next to it is an XMP file. Now we can right click on this and open it up with a text editor, which I'm going to do. And then all the metadata is going to be found inside of here. So let's do a search for white balance. And there's the setting that I use for this particular image. Now there are other edits inside of here as well, as you can see. And if I do a search for keywords, we'll see a list of those keywords for that particular file. Now, let's say your catalog becomes corrupted and you created the XMP files. How do you get the XMP data back into Lightroom? Well, all you have to do is create a new catalog. We're gonna give it a name and then re-import those raw files like we did originally. But this time, when we import them, all of them are going to be edited because Lightroom is going to read that XMP data and show you what that edit looks like. So all your edits will be back inside of Lightroom. All right, so another advantage of creating XMP files is they allow you to see your edits in Adobe Bridge and Photoshop. For example, if I double click on this file, it's going to automatically open it in Adobe Camera Raw and all the edits are going to be visible as you can see right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Adobe Bridge now and you can see the previews match what we saw in ACR. But if I delete the XMP file, then the preview updates without those edits. And then if I double click on this file again, they're not visible in ACR either. Okay, so the last advantage of XMP files is they allow you to share a raw file with someone else with the included editing information so they can see it as you created it. That is when you include the XMP file. Now, there are three disadvantages to turning on this feature. So let's explore those and then you'll have to decide for yourself whether or not to turn this feature on or not. The first disadvantage has to do with file management and possible workflow issues. So if we go back into this folder here, you can see there's 782 files, however, 322 of those are XMP files. So you're gonna have more files to manage and you're going to need more storage for those files. Now, the size of the files are very small the majority of the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort these by size. And you can see that the majority of these are four to 10 kilobytes in size 
and I have some between 100 and 500 kilobytes. And then I have two XMPs that are 1.2 megabytes, but the majority of them are very, very small. So the more information that you add to a particular file, keywords, labels, ratings, retouching, other editing adjustments, the more of those that you add, the larger this XMP file is. Now I actually moved these to a new folder of all the XMPs. So we have 322 XMP files and the size of that file is, let's take a look here, 29.4 megabytes. Now my original raw files are around the 25 megapixel size. So let's take a look. Here's one right here. It's 23.9. I have some other sizes here as well for the raw files, but generally the XMP files are taking up the same amount of space as one raw file. So that's something else that you're going to have to consider. Now, another thing to consider is that when you create XMP files, they can slow down your workflow, not because of the size of the XMP file, but because every time you update a photo with different metadata, retouching, exposure adjustments, tone curves, whatever the case may be, every time you make an adjustment, Lightroom has to take that information and write it into both your catalog and the XMP file. However, it's so fast that you'll probably never notice it. And I'd say it will slow down Lightroom by less than 1%. So unless you have a really ancient computer, I wouldn't worry about the speed. So I've been asked by several photographers why they should create XMP files since they back up the catalog upon exiting and or have a backup system in place to an external hard drive or into a cloud storage service or both. Well, simply backing up the catalog isn't always enough since you never know when the catalog can become corrupt. So let's say you just edited a thousand images and your backup workflow is to back up the catalog to an external drive and you do that. But during the backup process, the original and backed up catalog become corrupt at the same time. What are you going to do? Well, if you don't have the XMP files, you'll have to re-edit all 1000 images. Now there's one more disadvantage that I'll explain in a moment and it will make sense after I share something else you need to know before turning on this feature. And that is you have to retroactively apply this to all the images in your Lightroom catalog. So Lightroom will not automatically create the XMP files for edits you've done in the past. So to apply the XMP to previous edits, you're going to select the top folder you're going to select all the images. You're going to right click, go down to metadata, and then click on save metadata to files. Then Lightroom will go through each image in your catalog and create an XMP based on its edits and other metadata. Now, depending on how many images you have in your Lightroom catalog and the speed of your computer, this could take a few minutes or more to complete. And all of this is going to happen in the background, which means you can continue working in Lightroom while the XMP files are created. And for future photos, it will automatically create those XMP files for you. All right, so that brings us to our third disadvantage, which I've heard about from a couple of other photographers, but I haven't been able to confirm it myself. And that is XMP files contains information on the date it was created and modified dates which means if you go to sort your images outside of Lightroom, like through your Explorer or Finder window or the operating system window that you use, it's going to sort the images by the date of the XMP file or the date inside of the XMP file versus the raw file. Now, like I said, I've never experienced this since I've always had XMP files created from the start. So keep that in mind before you make your decision. Now, there is another option you can use in place of these XMP files, and that is to create a DNG file. So a DNG file stores the extra XMP file inside of it. So instead of two files, you just need to deal with one. So if you'd like to learn more about DNGs, let me know your questions about them in the comments below. To continue elevating your Lightroom classic skills, check out this quick tip playlist or this editing like a pro playlist. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.